recording and we'll go live on Facebook. Give me just a minute. I just got to get us on the right page here. Gotta love all the tech fun. I'm so glad it's you, not me. <laughs> okay, I think we're good. Going live. Okay, awesome. Let me just turn off my. Hold on, let me just. Okay, I think we're good. Okay. All right. Okay, let me just check on my phone. That's one thing about all of this. I just, we're live on Facebook now, but I just have to make sure um, because if people have comments, we can't see them here. So I'm just, if I look down on my phone, it's just to see if people have uh, comments and we'll give people a minute or so to jump on. Welcome if you're joining us live. Um, Julie and I are super excited to be here even though the tech gods have not been smiling on her. Okay, good. All right, I'm just gonna put this aside, but if we have questions, if you have any questions, post them below and I will make sure to check and Julie and I will answer all your questions. Okay, so welcome. Welcome to my friend, Julie Jarvis. Um, I'm so excited to have Julie joining us tonight and I really have been wanting to do this for a little while um, because Julie's going to talk to us about all things meditation. And for those of you that follow me or have done any of my programs, you know that I'm a bit of a broken record when it comes to promoting the use of meditation. I think it is literally the most important, powerful, accessible tool that we have to really start changing our relationship with food, right? It really puts us into that observer role and allows us to start seeing our patterns and habits around food and, and then the negative thought loops we get stuck in and all of that stuff that I talk about. Meditation is such a great tool to help you access all of that. So when I teach that, I get a ton of questions always about meditation because people are really interested and they want to do it and maybe they've tried it, but maybe they've been frustrated and you know they've had different experiences. And so I do my best to answer those questions, but I really wanted to bring on Julie because she is really the expert. Um, Julie is the founder of Real Things, which is a beautiful um, company, Canadian company that makes gorgeous meditation cushions. It's the meditation cushion that I use. I had an amazing fitting at Julie's studio, which was such a fascinating experience. I encourage anybody who's in the Toronto area to go do that and find her and, and give yourself that gift. But I just wanted to bring Julie on because she and I really connect really well. And I knew that she would be able to come and talk, answer some of our questions about meditation in a really um, patient, um, non-judgmental, accessible way and make it really easy for everybody. So welcome, Julie. Thank you so much. It's, it's great to be here. And uh, I'm excited to talk with everybody. Oh, well, yeah. With you. <laughs> Yay. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, I would love for you to, I introduce you a little bit, but I would love for you just to tell us a little bit more about yourself and about the company and sort of, you know, just briefly how you fell in love with meditation, what it's meant in your life, and then why you created Real, Real Things. Um, well, I first started meditation, you know, I first started meditation when I lived at the Aslan Institute in California. And they had the most beautiful meditation space. <clears throat> it was a roundhouse over a waterfall that was... Row, uh, went into the Pacific Ocean. And it was this beautiful, quiet space, which I didn't really attend too much, but I started there and that was the beginning of, of something. And then I got back to Canada and I, th I thought I wanted to recreate that and I sat on the floor and I, and I just started wiggling. I thought this is the most uncomfortable thing I've, I've ever done. I'm never gonna do this. I was wiggling inside, I was wiggling outside. And so uh, I went and searched and, and then it ended up founding a group of people to sit and meditate with. And I've been lucky to sit with a lot of wonderful people from different traditions, you know, uh, Zen and Tibetan Buddhism. And what I found is that uh, that part of me that was wiggling, the, my first problem was that I was not a cushion. So mm -hmm. I, I sat flat on the floor. I was really uncomfortable. And uh, I, I was just, my, my body was like, I'm not going to do this. Just forget it. You know, wholesale stop. And then the great thing about sitting with other people is they had cushions. And there was cushions at Esalen, but I hadn't quite made the connection. So when I started sitting on cushions, that was the start. That was the beginning of something. 
And also I needed the help of sitting with other people. Mm -hmm. um, sitting alone wasn't really, f it, at the beginning it wasn't really for me. I could sit alone if I was sitting with other people or maybe once a week, but sitting alone just by myself was hard. It was just really hard. Yeah. Um, so I really, pre I'm so touched by people who um, uh, can really do that practice themselves. But you said, why did I start? And it's because I sit with people. I sit with a lot of people and I've sat with a lot of people over 20 years. And what I started to notice was that people were stacking up cushions really high. It was becoming like a little nest, you know, under the knees and under the bum and they'd stack up maybe three or four cushions. And uh, so at first I thought, you know, this is people who are getting older and, you know, they were needing a little bit more support. But no, it wasn't actually. It was younger people coming into the practice who were tall and long-legged, who go to the gym, maybe have tight muscles. So increasingly what I saw was at first I had a vision to create a company, you know, they were needing a little bit more support um, to, um, <laughs> I'm hearing Sorry, the double. So, um, so I, I really wanted to create cushions that would support people in North America and Europe. And so the, the thing is, is that uh, our bodies are bigger they're less flexible because our lifestyle is different. We, we don't have a lot of flexibility in the hips. And, you know, the idea of the Zafu, which is what we, we make, a little round Zafu meditation cushion. Um, here, here's a very small one. Um, that would be a traditional size of a cushion, but that doesn't work for most North American bodies. It just doesn't. So um, my vision was to make beautiful cushions, but make them bigger and make them well and make them by hand so that people would have uh, experienced something that's been made for them, that's beautiful to touch, that nourishes them, and that helps them nourish a part of their self, uh, which we don't get a lot of support of it for the rest of our life. And we spend a lot of time in, in a busy day uh, running around, uh, just trying to get things done. Mm -hmm. And meditation is a way to return to something quiet and still in yourself and nourish a part of yourself that then I can then come out and bring out into the world and be more still. It's like a, it's a, it's like a touch point, a stillness to return to and, and, uh, and, and rest in, but also gain strength from. You know, meditation develops concentration and alertness it's not about sleeping. It's about really, um, it's a deep relaxation and it's a, and it's a practice. Yeah. 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 I love it. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. That was a lot. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. It gives us a good sense of like where, how you got here. Um, can you move the phone a little bit closer to you? Cause you're a little quiet. Oh, am I? Okay. It's a little bit hard to hear you. I know you're on a tripod there. Yeah, that would be great. Is that, can you hear me now? Yeah, I think that's probably better. Good. Okay. Um, okay. So let's talk about position. Let's talk about sitting. So um, what is the best position? Do you think like, what's the ideal position to be sitting in? Like obviously not on the floor, if that's going to be uncomfortable for you, but you know, some people like to sit in a chair. Some people like to lie down and, I notice that people fall asleep when they do that. So what, what is your experience in terms of the best way to just to sit in a, medita in a meditation practice? Uh, well, posture is really a, a strong support in meditation. So if you can have a straight spine and a straight back and have your um, posture be relaxed and still, so I'm not forcing myself up or um, putting myself in an awkward position. So basically the, the, ergonomics of it is if you can get your hips up higher than your knees, your pelvis will roll forward right. and your spine straightens naturally. Uh, but it doesn't matter really. The answer to your question is the posture that supports your practice is the best posture for you. So really that's what we really want people to know. And there's the, the, the posture and the cushions and the practice that's going to help you meditate. That's the best one. Yeah. A lot of people have an idea like, oh, you have to do it this way or you have to do it that way, and you don't. But saying that, the straight spine does really support your practice if you can do it. So 
a lot of people to do, choose to do it in a chair. We make a cushion for a chair so that mm -hmm. it lifts you up and it allows you to sit straight, which is wonderful. Yeah. And then we make uh, cushions, uh, and they're, as I say, they're bigger. So we make them in four sizes, but three main sizes. And the, uh, here, I don't know if you can see it, but sort of that's our cushion. And it's that's what I have. Yeah. So it's quite a good size. It's, um, that's our medium, Zafu. And uh, it gives people enough height, most people enough height, so that they can get up over their knees and their knees can come to the ground. Or they can sit in the middle of it cross-legged without putting too much pressure on their, on their ankles. Mm -hmm. the, the most popular way now increasingly to sit is to take one of those big cushions and turn it on its side and kneel. Right, you showed me that when I was at yeah. your place, yeah. So especially for tall people, people of injury, uh, people who have a lot of inflexibility in their hips, or but you know, a lot of yoga teachers I sit with, they love this position. They choose it all the time. Mm. So, um, and they choose this height of a cushion too, which is it's eight inches. So it's quite it's quite high, and uh, it really allows the body to to straighten and relax. And, and really, I, I have a joke, but everybody knows it. People smile, the body smiles. As soon as the body starts to really relax and it finds its place, then uh, you can see that there's a spontaneous smile. And uh, yeah, and, and people can begin to be quiet. And they're quite amazed. People are like, no, I move all the time, I wiggle, and I'm like, I'm, I'm a wiggler. So I understand <laughs> that. But actually, when you get that position, whether it's on the chair or on your sofa, or some people do it from their bed, uh, it's it's wonderful. The, but the problem with lying down is lying down is wonderful relaxation, and I and I think that's wonderful for everybody to practice. But it's very easy to start to sleep. Mm -hmm. That's what people tell me. They say they lie down and then and then they fall asleep. And that's because when the spine is not there to support them, and this there's not this alertness in the same way. Yeah. So it's just very easy. Uh, to, to drift off. So I, I support people doing that, but I wouldn't, I would find it very difficult for a meditation practice. Yeah. I also find that when I sit properly, I really feel that sort of grounding like of exactly. myself that down that sort of through line, like into the earth, I feel very grounded and I love that feeling. It, 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 it allows me to go deeper, I think, into my meditation. Whereas when I'm lying down, I don't feel that grounded sense, I feel relaxed and, and that's lovely too, but, but I don't feel that beautiful sort of connection with the earth the yeah, way you do when it, you're it sitting. Next you to the sky and the earth, right? Yeah, There's, I love that. To me, that my body, my body smiles when I feel that way, right? I, it's yeah. really delicious. And I don't, I don't get that when I lie down. So yeah, yeah. A, a good friend of mine who's a, who's a Zen teacher, he, um, he describes it as, you know, you want to just be sitting still like a majestic mountain. Mm. So there's something very, that even the shape of us when we sit, either with our legs crossed or kneeling, or even on a chair, when you feel that the whole body is, is sort of in alignment like a mountain and one can be very still and quiet. That's it's a beautiful, beautiful idea. I know. Yeah. I, I'm going to remember that. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Um, the other questions I get a lot, a lot of people ask me, what is the best time of day to meditate? And I'm interested in your, if you have an opinion on that, because it's a question I get a lot. Morning, night. Yeah. Um, for me, uh, I think, me, I prefer the, the morning, mm -hmm. uh, because I think uh, for a lot of people, there's something about um, sunrise or waking up with something, but there's also a practical thing. When you get up, it's a way to start your day. So. You can start before the rest of the world sort of starts to take over and take over your thoughts. Uh, there's a moment that you can be still and prepare yourself for the day. Yeah. So in that way, I think the morning is really strong and supportive. I'm sure there's lots of other reasons why people would say. And then for similar reasons, people meditate at night, particularly if they're very wound up and they want to really be still. But that's where it's important. If you're lying on the bed, it will lead possibly to sleep, which is one thing. But if you really want to practice something, then to sit at night too is really wonderful. But really anytime you can find times in your day to practice, that's good. And it's, I think if you practice at the same time, 
every day or every other day or once a week, uh, you start to develop, the body starts to develop a, a, a discipline in a way, in the best way. So it's like, oh, this time, it's this time again. And the body looks forward to it. Right. You know, so it's in the way that you describe it. You know, you said, oh, I'm sitting. I love this feeling as I do. It's relaxing to sit like this. So the body works with you and then the mind uh, is going to work with you and also the heart. So you, you really want, you really want that. But, you know, if somebody only has 10 minutes in their day because their house is chaotic in the morning, you know, trying to get kids out and, and at night, the same thing, or they're just so exhausted, they want to go to bed, which yeah. we all understand. Uh, but you can find 10 minutes to close your door at an office or there's a quiet space or room that you have access to somewhere in the day. And you could at least take 10 minutes to turn off all your technology, like turn it away, turn away from it, and really come back and ground yourself into something and connect in something, I think, and, and really uh, make yourself, uh, uh, not special, but uh, um, dedicate time that's for you, mm. that's for nourishing this part. Um, uh, as mm. I say, because the rest of the world wants us to be running and doing and finishing and starting and all these sorts of things and and meditation is asking you to be just to be so uh so that actually nourishes the part of ourselves that gets nourished when we're uh you know dangling our toes in the water or looking at a sunset or you know um, walking in the woods there's so many things that can help with that but meditation will allow you to do have a similar kind of practice but right in a cushion right right where you are yeah um so that's really lovely and oh, that's beautiful we need we need more of that in our lives we do you know it, i i um i was listening to the cbc i think recently and they said uh people are saying it's it's becoming increasingly difficult to have 10 undistracted minutes in your day mm -hmm. so that's a lot so there's no like wandering out, looking at the window, la di da, you know, like yeah. walking along the beach. It's it's getting harder. So we have to make a bigger effort to say, well, we're we're important, and yeah. we, we need this for ourselves. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That um that brings up my next question, which is another question that I get a lot. In addition to um the best time of day, people often ask how long should they meditate for? Like is 10 minutes enough or does it need to be 30 or does it need to be an hour or what are your thoughts on that? I think an hour is a big commitment for somebody, mm -hmm. particularly if they're just starting. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a long time. Uh, you know, if you're part of a community, a spiritual community or something and that's what they're doing, then that would be something. But mm -hmm. as a daily practice it, or even a, you know, a couple of days a week, 20 minutes would be a lot if you could do it. Uh, and, but I, I know I was just speaking to somebody who uh, praises herself. She gets up, she does it for five minutes every day. She sets the timer and that's the beginning of her day. And it's so important to her. She's disciplined about mm -hmm. it and she loves it. You know, five minutes is short. I actually, if you do five minutes, it might seem longer than 10. <laughs> it's yeah. a funny thing. Once you start, I know what you mean. Sort of get into it 10 you know I, I know I, sometimes I do it with people who work with me and they'll think one minute's a really really long time but when we increase it up to five or ten minutes it starts to get better I you know it's, yeah it's time is a funny thing that way uh, but uh, you know if you could do ten, 10 minutes I think 10 minutes 20 minutes would be a long undertaking if you're just starting you know 30 minutes is a great practice you know if you can do yeah. 30 minutes in the morning every day a couple of days a week that's a wonderful wonderful practice yeah to, to start building your in your life but 10 minutes or or 20 minutes i i mean not 10 if you can start with 10 the yeah. thing about just as long as is i'm not cheating myself you know like it's very easy to a uh, one i'll start with one minute oh oh you know i'm gonna do 10 but oh after one minute i think about something to do and i run off and, and so you might not give yourself enough time in that one minute to really get a sense of what it is to try and con it's like entering the stillness you have to 
you have to quiet yourself enough to enter that place. Yeah, I find that it takes me about 10 minutes just to settle. Like yeah. for the, you know, it's like the sort of like the, the pond, like the, if you, with the muddy water, right? Like it takes 10 minutes for the, for my, my brain to quiet a little bit and my body to calm a little bit. And so I, I feel like it's, takes me 10 minutes to do that. So then I have to, I need, I need 20 minutes because it takes me 10 minutes to settle. And then I need 10 minutes of actual sitting, sitting. Yeah. So yeah. for me, that's what works or, you know, or longer, but, um, but yeah, I find if I do less than that, it's, it's it takes me that much time just to just to get there. <laughs> no, it's so true. And, but I, it just depends, I guess, uh, where you are in your practice, because yeah. you've been practicing for a long time. So right. um, if I'm just starting, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to just trying to remember, but I think that uh, 10 minutes, uh, if you can do that as a practice, yeah, and that would be great. Uh, but if you really want to start to feel something, 20 minutes is better. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. And like you were saying, it's more about really the consistency, right? Like it making is. it the, the, the discipline, yeah. making it a, a practice. Yeah. As I said, because this person who, who I met who does it for five minutes is just really dedicated and she loves it and it's, and it's really meaningful to her in her life. So uh, I think people are going to approach these things what, to, in a way that suits them. What we really want to do is make sure that, uh, that, that they don't run into obstacles that are, are not necessary. Like, you know, like I ran into the cushion problem. Yeah. Uh, which is why I'm sensitive to that. But other people will run into the problem of, oh, if I don't meditate, if I have to meditate for an hour. If I don't, it's not correct. Mm. Right. Uh, and again, if that's just pushing you so much in your life and your time or just, you know, it's difficult to sit with yourself for, for an hour um, uh, at the beginning. So, uh, so, so not to do that to yourself. I, I remember meeting a woman in, in an airport and she said, well, if you could tell somebody one thing, one thing about meditation, like one thing to help them, what would you tell them? Because she really wanted to meditate, but she was a wiggler. She was having a really hard time. And uh, I said to be kind to yourself you know, mm -hmm. because we're not, you know, yeah. we don't know how to love ourselves enough and uh, to be kind and say, oh, I'm, I'm trying to meditate and I'm having a hard time or I'm trying to meditate and it feels uncomfortable. Maybe I need some help. Yeah. Or, 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 or just, I'm, I'm trying to meditate. It feels kind of good. I, I might do a little bit more. You know, people have all these different uh, experiences. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. It's true. It always comes back to that. Just being patient with yourself, being loving with yourself, mm -hmm. and just, yeah, just letting it be whatever it is. Right. Mm -hmm. Because it's a study, really. It's just what I'm trying to uh, see more and more of who I am and how I am. Mm. You know, uh, mm. I always tell people the thing that you know when they're talking about practicing meditation and the mindfulness. So that I always see meditation as the as the preparation for being more mindful in my day, for example, mm. and it's the touchstone. So in the practice of meditation, if uh, something can learn to be less attached, so the attention is uh, uh, not taken all the time by things around me, uh, then it has something quiet and still to return to. So for example, if I'm in an airport and I miss my flight, so that's a really good example. Most people know that example. <laughs> and, uh, or I'm in the wrong gate or whatever, the, the customs lineup is too long and, and people start to fret. You know, they fret and they freak out. Some people yell at the attendants and, you know, other people try and run around, you know, but actually we know that there's not much that can be done in that situation. So there's a really, it's a, it's a wonderful moment. If, if I already have a sense of what it is to go inward uh, and be peaceful, then in that moment, something else can uh, be quiet and not be taken away. And I am much better prepared to deal with the situation and actually find a better solution if some part of me cannot be completely caught caught up in the event, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and then, and we get ourselves all in a tizzy about stuff, and that's timely, you know. It's it's much nicer to actually uh, be calm when we can do yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because it's all in your perception of the situation, right? I mean, it, it is what you make it mean. So, um, yeah, I agree that that mindfulness practice allows you to settle into a nicer, a nicer place, a nicer meaning. 
or just to be a, much more aware of what's going on, you know. Yeah. Be, and yeah. also be engaged in life, to be able to enter life much more uh, fully and and and, and uh, playfully. If I'm not distracted all the time, what are they thinking? What is that person thinking? What you know? But actually, no. Here I am, and I'm doing this. I'm with my friends. I want to do this. Let's do it. You know. Yeah. So there's there's also that. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um. A lot of people say when they, you know, I, I have a lot of clients who have tried, like they really want to meditate. They, they, they get the benefits. They think it sounds great and they've tried, but they say, I tried, but I couldn't turn off my brain. And um, I'd be interested in your thoughts on that because, you know, I, I always say that like, that's, that's meditation, right? The, that whole, the whole monkey mind, like you're never going to really turn off your brain. Um, but I think people have this idea that meditation is that, I sit and then the switch goes off and I, and I have no thoughts. And then, and if I, and if I do have thoughts, then I'm doing it wrong. Yeah. Well, we can't turn off our brain. So mm -hmm. we'd be dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, but I understand people do say that, or, you know, I want to control my mind or, or whatever. And I, um, I think that uh, what I was talking about uh, was a little bit, you know, uh, moving in that direction. But if we saw the mind or the thoughts of the mind like clouds passing by, uh, the more I can, the more I can develop my practice, the less I am uh, distracted by the clouds. So the th thoughts are just like clouds, they're going by. So say right now I was thinking of, um, uh, oh, I have to go buy groceries or something. Oh, but no, I'm here talking to you. So that go buy groceries is a thought, but it just passes by. Mm -hmm. But I don't have to jump onto it. My mind doesn't have to run over there. Right. So, so uh, the thing is, is it's, it's, it's developing this understanding that first of all, our mind is racing all the time, whether we're paying attention to it or not. Yes. So that is going on all the time. But if we're not, but when we sit to meditate, what we get to do is we get to see how the mind works. That's actually what's happening. So how can I how can I start to develop an attention that starts to see that better, and then see myself better, and uh, again not be so caught up by the thoughts that are running by. You know, yeah. uh, I have a choice whether I'm interacting or not. And sometimes you know there's emergencies or different things that are happening, and mm -hmm. and uh, you know we are as we are. But the more we see ourselves, the more we can. Uh, the more we can be patient, the more we can be compassionate, the more that we can be fully ourselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 You really train your training, your brain mm -hmm. to do, to get better at that, at, at not mm -hmm. attaching to every thought, right. To, yeah. to see that sort of gap between you and your thoughts, right. That you are not your thoughts. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the same emotions. Uh, we are not our emotions. And, yeah. and then also for the body to have a chance to understand what it is to be still, because you know, the bodies are meant to move. Mm -hmm. But uh, like the analogy you were saying is similar to it, um, shaking. If you took a bottle of water and sand and you shook it all up, the sand would be stirring around like that. Yeah. And that's how we are a lot of the time. And so, but if you put the jar down, then the sand settles. And then that's what the body starts to do when it finds a still posture and a still place that the body starts to settle. And then the emotions can start to settle in the mind. So when that's how they work together. I think they support each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, I, I think it's, uh, it's really, it's a practice. It, it, it really is. It's, it's, pr it's a practice of becoming uh, aware and also compassionate. Yeah. Um, both those Love things. it. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, if anyone's watching us live, if you do have any other questions, feel free to type them below and Julie and I will um, absolutely answer them. Um, what are your sort of tips? What tips do you give people on like, how do they create if they're brand new to meditation and they find it somewhat intimidating? Like what are, what's a, what's a great way to kind of start to set up, to start to cultivate this kind of regular daily practice for yourself? Like, do you have sort of a step-by-step -step system that you give people to like um, create this um, just to sort of cultivate that daily practice? 
Well, I don't have a step-by-step because -step everybody's step-by-steps are kind of a little bit different. Right. So everybody's going to enter it their own way. I would say that there's certain things, and you, we've touched on them. There's there's sort of four things that I would say people are, need to address when they're starting. So so one is you have to create time. Mm -hmm. So that's what you were speaking about. So it's not only which time of the day is best, but I actually have to say I'm going to take this time. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and when am I going to take it, and for how long? So. Yeah. So that's one thing. And then the other thing is space. Where am I going to do it? So uh, ideally, uh, you want to find a place that's quiet because you want support when you're practicing in the beginning. You know, you don't want to put yourself out there in the middle of chaos or when your body feels vulnerable because there's something about going inside yourself, which is what you're doing when you're meditating, really, mm -hmm. um, it, that makes you want to be still and quiet. So I don't want to be doing this, you know, some people do it on the subway and stuff, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even do it in a park because there's people coming and going all the time and it doesn't feel so safe to me. So uh, I like to do it. I like to find the quiet space. So. A lot of people now are setting up uh, corners of their house or their mm -hmm. or even rooms in their house. So they're setting it up as a dedicated space so that when they go in there, they realize that it, it, it calls them in a way and it's tended mm -hmm. and it's cared for and it's beautiful. They set it up the way they want. Mm -hmm. And some people do things like bells and incense. Other people just do beautiful fabrics and cushions. Other people set it up uh, in different in, in different ways to completely suit their taste. You know, people are doing different things, which yeah. is beautiful. Yeah, I so love it. You, you create a, like an oasis of calm. And then for other people, it's more about, you know, they might be wanting to do it at work. So it's, again, it's just finding that location. So the third thing is being comfortable. So we, we talked about that and finding the right cushions, the right posture. So that's really important. Giving yourself permission to try different things. And then the fourth thing is really about uh, um, resources like your teacher or your uh, what is going to help guide you in your practice. Right, right. I think everybody needs help. Uh, so there's lots of apps online. You know, you can go, you can, there's ones that are free. There's lots of teachers who have posted, who are wonderful teachers who have posted their meditations online. Then there are, you know, things you can sign up for, get different meditations on a daily and monthly basis. Uh, there's lots of different kinds of meditation groups in the city that you can participate in, some spiritual, some not spiritual. Mm -hmm. There you can get the experience of group meditation. So really, you have to know who you are and how you are. Uh, is it going to be something that's going to call you? I think a lot of people just want to kind of try it out at home, which is nice. And even if you can, you know, maybe somebody's out of your bedroom, you can, you know, pull a few cushions together and sit, sit on your bed and see how that feels. Uh, just give yourself permission to try a few things, uh, not to get it right, but just to try. Yeah. 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 So Love it. it's really those four things that, uh, and, and usually setting the time is one of the, one of the difficult things, but if the yeah. body feels comfortable and you have a great space, you're more inclined to set this. You're more inclined yeah. to set and I think, you know, you and I were talking about this the other day when we were chatting about um, the time. And I know for parents, it's tricky, right? Because I have a lot of moms that I work with and they say, you know, I literally don't have any time because if I try and meditate, like the kids are banging on the door and it's just too distracting. And I totally respect and get that. But I also think there's something really lovely about, about your kids seeing you, of, of you modeling that, of, of you making that time for yourself, right? Because like my kids you know, they think I'm a little like woo woo crazy. Sometimes they're used to me, but they also totally, it's completely normal for them that in the morning mom's meditating. Right. So they'll often say to me later in the day, like, Oh, I was, I need you to sign this form, but I didn't want to bug you because I know you're downstairs meditating. And I always think it's nice that they even, that that's just part of their growing up. Right. That like my kids don't meditate. I've tried to get them to, but you know, they won't, but I hope that in seeing that in me modeling that for them, you know, maybe later in life, it will, it will be more accessible. It will be more, no, more normal to them because they will have grown up with me doing that. And so I think as a parent, you know, it, it's, a nice, it's a good thing. It's, it's okay for your kids for you to say to them, like, for 10 minutes, unless somebody's bleeding to death, like, do not knock on this door, right? I mean, obviously, that doesn't work if you have babies and stuff. But, but even young kids, I think, can give you 10 minutes. Um, and again, I think it's actually really good for them to see you taking that time for yourself because it's going to make it easier when they're older 
to take that time for themselves. And that's what we want, right? So I think that, you know, we were talking about that. And I think that's an important thing for, for parents to think about, right? It's not like a selfish thing to take that time. It's actually, you're really modeling something really beautiful for your kids. Yeah, no, I love that story of yours. It really, really, it just makes me smile every time you tell it. <laughs> um, and then I was saying too, you know, I grew up uh, with a mother who did yoga and we did yeah. the same thing. Tease my mom all the time, like, oh my gosh, she's doing that weird stuff, and she's yeah. trying to do the breathing, and we do the breathing, but it'd be like, oh gosh. And yet, there she did. What did she do? She created, and you know, she was loved people like Thich Nhat Hanh, who are great meditation teachers, and uh, it created a space for me uh, to find my own way. You yeah. Know? I mean, so I wouldn't have, and think about it. Obviously, at the time, I just thought, well, this is a strange thing. So I yeah. just love that, oh, know. exactly. My kids think I'm totally nuts, but I'm hoping <laughs> that I'm playing a long game and they're going to have that in their minds. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's great. So time, space, comfort, and then teacher or some kind of guide. Yeah. That's so a great, those are great sort of four pillars for people to think about when they're... Yeah, they're like really strong four pillars, you know, because yeah. it really helps you say, okay, well, what are my obstacles? It's like, oh, I just yeah. need to find time and space and get comfortable and find something, something to help guide me, you know, or... If that's not working, find a teacher, find a private teacher, find a group teacher, or find a group to sit with. Yeah, you know, I love that. Yeah, it makes it really like actionable for people. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Carol has a question. She says, I'm using guided meditations on Insight Timer. What are your thoughts on guided meditations versing, versus sitting in quiet or just listening to music? Well, I think uh, guided meditations, I mean, they're all vastly different. You know, there's many different traditions and stuff, but guided meditations do help you develop that practice and training of the mind. So, for example, if I'm sitting with somebody and they're um, calling me to bring my attention to the top of my head or to parts of my body, or if I'm working with repeating mantras or, or whatever, whatever the practice is, that does help develop a certain level of attention. And because when we keep returning to that, it keeps, again, from being distracted from something else. Yeah. So it does give the monkey mind something to do, uh, and it helps develop the, it helps develop the, the practice. So um, uh, sitting in silence, I think, is, 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 is wonderful. I, lo I love that. But uh, I, I also think, I mean, that would be more my practice, but uh but there's always a there's always um there's always support and help from listening to guide yeah guidance you know but yeah. you just have to find the teacher or the the guide that really speaks to you i think that's really important yeah it's not just anybody teaching anything or any uh any guided meditation you know i think really you need to find the teachers uh, who resonate with you, yeah, really speak to something in you and who help you develop your practice. I think. Are there any that you recommend that you, at the off top of your head, can think of that people might find? Um, I like uh, Tara Brock. I was going to say Tara Brock is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Sharon Sells, Sharon Salzberg. Right. Um, there's uh, Andy Puttycomb. Yeah. Uh, Oh, well, I mean, there's so many. Um, but if you start, like, if you start with somebody like Tara Brock or Sharon Salzberg, mm -hmm. they're very solid. They yeah. They put really good practices and good guidance and, and great stillness in their practice. You can, you can feel that with them. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I tend towards people who coming, who, um, you can really feel that there is a spiritual practice in there, but, yeah. uh, but everybody has, everybody has what's uh, their own way and what attracts them. So you really have to follow that, you know? I agree. So some people take a much more, um, uh, I don't know, it's a practical approach or, uh, but they're really learning to develop the mind and they really want exercises and training and guidance in that. And so then they'll follow, they'll follow someone else who's, who's really focusing on that. So increasingly you'll see uh, people offering certain kinds of meditations, healing meditations, heart meditations. Right. Uh, so uh, there's a lot out there. I understand how it's confusing, but yeah. I think those are three people who are really- I love all three of those. I love that you named all of them. I think they're super um, 
uh, very accessible for people, right? They're not, I agree, they all have a deep spiritual practice, but they're not too far on the like woo-woo scale, you know, to make it, because sometimes that intimidates people as well. So I love all three of those because I think they're very, anyone could listen to any of those. And I think, you know, has a good starting point. Um, yeah. But I think you're right. I agree. Like just people yeah. need to find what resonates with them. There's also um, uh, uh, Dan Harris. I don't know if you know him. Oh, yeah. He, yeah, I have his like book. Yeah. 10% happier. And he's just written a new one. Yeah. Which is one with Jeff Warren, who's actually from Toronto, which is oh. from Toronto. Yeah. So th th they're a great team. And he really is out to uh, talk to people and take away uh, a lot of the mystery around meditation to try and make it accessible. So they really went across the country asking people, like, what gets in your way? And mm -hmm to really try and help people uh, access it because of his experience, which is that in his life, you know, he was resistant to it. I know. Yeah. It's a great book or 10% happier. I haven't read the new one, but yeah, it, it is a great book and, and he's a wonderful speaker. You can find him online. So mm -hmm. you can just Google him, um, Dan Harris, and you'll get one of his, his talks uh, easily on YouTube. Uh, so yeah, there are many people. Yeah, yeah that's great. That's good. Okay, wonderful. Um, so where can people find you? Again, I, I was mentioning at the beginning, but just so people know, I went for a lovely um, cushion fitting, which was the most fascinating experience um, at your studio in Toronto, which was so great. And I have a beautiful cushion that I use every day as a result. Um, so if you're in the Toronto area, I really encourage you to think about giving yourself a gift of a cushion from Julie because it's really worth, she'll really help you find the right one exactly for you. Um, and it's, it's like a lifetime investment really. Cause I think I'm going to have this thing forever. <laughs> it feels like it's going to last forever. It's so beautiful. Um, but where's the best place for people to find you online or if they want to learn more yeah. about, I know that you also deliver your cushions all over, right? Mm hmm People don't have to be. Uh, yeah, we, we work primarily. We work primarily online, and then what we do is we take appointments at the home studio, which is what you did, which is yeah. you know in the annex in Toronto. So people make appointments and they come, and then we sit and make sure they find the right cushions. Um, more and more, we're developing video so people can go online. Good idea. And they can, uh, so they don't have to come here. That yeah. you know they can get much better idea of what might work for them, and yeah. so they can just order online. So we have that. And then we have got the yoga show coming up in three weeks. So we're there for three days. I'll uh, be there too. I'll come see you. Oh, great. Yay. <laughs> so uh, there we just do sitting fittings for three days straight. So that's another place to find us. But we do it. We do work at different events and, um, and we go to offices and different things like that. So, but really the best way to get to us is realthingscushion.com. That's our, that's our website. So. Okay, yeah. we'll, I'll put that below too in the comments when we're done so people can click over there and go. You have a beautiful site and you can see all the cushions online there and uh, all the different, there's not just cushions, you have those, those cool little, because um, you know, I find too sometimes when I'm sitting, my knees like pushing on the floor get sore and you have those beautiful yeah. little, can you show those, those little triangle knee cushions? Yeah, triangle. Those are ingenious. Yeah. <laughs> so they go right under your knees. They sort of disappear under your knees. But yeah. I created them originally for me. Because <laughs> I needed them, and uh, and so now lots of people really enjoy them, and it's great. They just lift your knees up a little bit, so if your knees fall asleep or they're painful yeah. when you're sitting, they just help a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are beautiful. Love it. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Is there anything else? Did you? If, I feel like we got a lot of great information. Was there any other any other tips or any advice you want to leave people with in terms of on their meditation journey? No, uh, but I love the, I just want to say, I just love the connection with food and eating and mindfulness and meditation. Mm -hmm. I really, I love that you're making that connection and you're putting those Thank things you. together and we can share that with other people too. Uh, because, mm -hmm. you know, when you're eating, you're nourishing yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so fundamental to how we are. And, yeah. and meditation is another kind of nourishment for other parts of ourselves. Yeah. And so that you are working with those things and sharing them with your community and as such a bright star, really. Like, <laughs> I think it's so great. So thank you so much. And thank you for, uh, for introducing me to everybody. Hi, hi, hi. And, yeah, uh, no, it's my pleasure, really. Again, I know this is going to be so valuable because I get these questions all the time. I'm going to keep this video <laughs> forever. Um, it'll be really, really good because I know we're, we're going to help people and, and, and sort of 
um, I just want to, my hope with this was just to make it more, I, I want people, people to feel less intimidated to start yeah. a meditation practice, right? To just start, like you were saying, just, just try, like just start, just start. Uh, you know, however long, whenever you want to do it. Um, I love the four pillars you gave, you know, the, the time, space, comfort, and resources or a guide teacher. Um, I think that's going to be really helpful because really I just want more people to use this, this tool and be able to access this for themselves because it's really changed my life. So, um, so I hope that we've done that tonight and I feel like we have. So thank you so much for taking some time and coming and hanging out with us. It was really, really a joy. <laughs> And um, if any people, if anyone has questions, if you're watching this on the replay, you can still um, post them below and uh, I will make sure that, or Julie can come look, I'll tag her, or make sure that she comes and sees so that she can answer any of your questions that you have after, either about whatever we talked about or if you have questions about cushions or anything else for her, feel free to post it below and we'll make sure you get an answer to your question. I think one of the things I would say is just that uh, some people write me and they always say, oh, I think this is a really silly question or this is a stupid question. We love those questions the most. You know, when people yeah. think they're silly, they're never silly or stupid. We no, just that's how we think. And the more people ask questions, the more everybody else is relieved. And they're like, oh, I wanted to ask that. Yeah. So we love them. So thank yeah. you for saying that. That's also. Yeah, great. I agree. Yes, exactly. All questions are great questions. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much again, Julie. This was really, really lovely. I really appreciate you taking the time and uh, we will talk to you soon. Okay. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.